All right, we are two weeks into the Georgia Bulldog football season. The dogs have taken care of business against UT Martin and Ball State. Two cupcakes, two cupcakes. We're in and out now in South Carolina. They come into Athens next weekend, but what does Georgia need to improve on? What have we learned from this team so far through two weeks? That's what this video is all about. Now, the first thing that comes to my mind is the run game offensively. They got to do a little better, um, and I'm talking about the entire run game. Not necessarily the backs, but the offensive line, and I spoke about this in another video. They really miss Darnell Washington's blocking um, at, at the tight end position on the perimeter. Just everything he brings to the table. I'm a big Oscar Delp guy. I told everyone about Oscar Delp years before he even had his first offer. He's really good. They are missing that big physical, just dominant run blocking machine in Darnell Washington. And uh, you know he opened up so many holes last year. His presence is gone. And uh, it We've seen that in the first two games. Roger Robinson, I'm driving home from the Ball State game. I think Roger Robinson was the leading rusher with like 35, 40 yards. I may have that completely wrong. I barely was able to look at the statistics after uh, the final whistle was blown, but I can't remember the last time a leading rusher in a Georgia game, a game where they won by 42 points, rush for less than 50 yards. Now, I know they're rotating guys, and I know Kendall Milton is not 100%. Dejan Edwards is not 100%. We haven't seen him at all. Excuse me. Um, but we we need to see more consistency. I say we, but if Georgia wants to win the national championship, I, I think it's clear, right, that they need to improve the run game, and they need to improve the blocking up front. And, you know, I was one of the many people who thought that this was or could be the best offensive line in college football. And I still think they could. I think they're going to step their game up when they play a better opponent. That's just what they do against Oregon to start the season last year. Different team, different quarterback, I get that. But you saw that fire and energy against Oregon. And you saw it the next week at South Carolina when they just blew the doors open. I mean, it was drive after drive after drive to start the game. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And right now we're not seeing that. It was 0-0 after the first quarter. This past game that got off to a slow start against UT Martin in week one, I think we're going to see a change when South Carolina comes to town, um, when Kentucky and Florida and Auburn roll around. We're going to see a different team, and I think Kirby's going to have them ready to come out with some fire and energy and put up some points in the first quarter. Now, they did drive the field. It's not like they're going three and out here and three and out the next possession and so on. They're not struggling to move the ball. They should have had the field goal. It was a chip shot uh, that they missed earlier in this game. And like I said in another video, it just doesn't seem like they're as cohesive as they have been to start years in the past, right? But Mike Bobo knows what he's doing, and he's put up 40 points in the last two games. I think Georgia's going to score 40 again against South Carolina. They're going to win the game. Uh, South Carolina, I, I tried telling a lot of people, they're the same South Carolina. They're no different than what they've been in the past. They're incredibly Jekyll and Hyde. They'll have a couple, maybe three big victories this season, but they're going to look bad at times, and they did not look great against North Carolina. And I do think Georgia's defense is for real. They've only gone against two cupcakes, uh, giving up seven points, three points, none by the starters. So the starters have their first test. If you want to call it a test against Spencer Rattler, a guy that they just owned last year. But he didn't play bad against North Carolina. He just got sacked a million times. But I do think Georgia's looking to pin their ears back and get after him. But um, the defense has been fine. They've given up, you know, a, a first down or two here and there and some rushing yards here or there, but it, it's getting a little nitpicky because they just insert guys in and out. I mean, there's a lot of second and third stringers who are playing in the first quarter on Georgia's defense. This is all about the offense and basically the run game because it's just hasn't been there to where, you know, Georgia fans and people like myself who cover the team are used to expecting. Right, we're used to this, you know, at least one speed demon, right? A guy who can get the ball in the open space and just outrun everybody. Well, they don't have a guy like that. Uh, they've got some bruisers. They've got some guys who can, you know, break tackles and push the pile forward and get tough yards. But I, I think they need an alpha. I could be wrong there, but I think they need an alpha 
mixed in with some other backs uh, to help the Alpha out. But there's no Todd Gurley on this team. There's no Nick Chubb. There's no Sony Michelle. There's no DeAndre Swift. And I don't think there's a Kenny McIntosh either. So, you know, that was a position group that we had questions about going into the season. I think they're going to come out, and the offensive line, I think are going to come out with the chip on their shoulder. They're going to get pushed this week in practice. And they're going to look over the numbers. And Kirby's going to tell those guys, hey, we only rushed for 100 yards against Ball State. Not a state, but it's Ball State. Um, that can't happen. And I know Kirby got a little frustrated with the media. I think someone asked him, like, hey, what's up with the slow starts? What's up with the running game? And he took offense to that. He says, well, you know, the running game is built because of, you know, other aspects, other plays that we run early in the game. We're supposed to help out the run game. It was a very coach speak answer. And I thought it was a, a good question. When you're blowing teams out, when you're the number one team in the country and it's the first quarter and it's 0-0, zero, zero, yeah, you know, it, people who cover the team are going to have questions. Why, why did you start off slow for the second week in a row? Why aren't you dominating the way you did to start the season last year? And I know you're not supposed to compare one team to another team. I, I try not to do that, but they've set the standard, and that's go out and win every play and dominate and shove their nose in the ground and you know make them wish they didn't have to play you for a while, right? But it didn't look like that on the scoreboard, at least in the first quarter. Now, again, two weeks in a row, out the gates a little slow, not sluggish, a little slow, but they got it together. And once things started to click a little bit and they got some points on the board and they got into a flow, they got into a rhythm. I want to see that rhythm for four quarters though. I've covered two straight national titles, the championship teams, right? And I know what a Kirby Smart coach team can do. And they're kind of going backwards. It felt like um, it, it didn't feel like a Todd Munkin offense for sure. It's more of a Jim Chaney offense is what we've seen the past two weeks. It just shows how good Todd Munkin was and how good Kenny McIntosh was and how good George Pickens and Darnell Washington were and how good Stetson Bennett was. But I, I'm still a Carson Beck guy. I thought he played really well out there tonight. Uh, I say tonight. It was today. Uh, he didn't play perfect, but he, he did the job. And his one turnover was on a ball that was, I thought, accurately thrown. But it was thrown because I still think that Carson Beck thought it was offsides. And he said, I've got a free play. I'm going to let this rip. Uh, Dylan Bell is very much covered down the field. But, hey, you know, it's a free down. It wasn't a free down, but he thought it was. And that's where the interception happened. It wasn't some bogus misread or you just you know an overall bad read by Carson uh, he just thought he had a free play when he didn't but Carson Beck is a good quarterback we saw him for three plus quarters today did not see as much Brock Vandegrift and Gunnar Stockton as I thought we would see but you know Carson was in there when they were up 30 plus points still but he's getting better and the offense is going to get better and the running backs are, are what they are. I don't think they're getting any faster, but they are collectively, I think they're good enough to get the job done. Uh, and the job is, of course, winning a national championship. And I, I'm ready to see this team against a quality opponent, if you want to call South Carolina a quality opponent. I'm not sure I'm, I'm there yet, but they're better than Ball State. It's a bigger test than Ball State. It's a bigger test than UT Martin. I'm excited to cover this team and see what they can do against an SEC foe. A game that really means something to where, you know, if they don't come out and play their best football, it could be close in the fourth quarter, right? We've seen South Carolina come into Athens and win a game. That was at noon, and Georgia was just came out completely flat, completely uninterested. And it was a, a terrible game by Jake Fromm, bad game by Tyler Simmons. Those guys are gone, right? I don't think Georgia's going to score whatever, you know, 18, 19, 20 points, whatever that was. They're going to score 40 next week, and I expect the run game to improve. I think they're going to run for more yards uh, against South Carolina than they did the last two weeks to start the season. And now part of me is thinking, does what we have what we seen the past two weeks, does it even matter anymore? The game is over, uh, and I'm trying to think of things that, you know, we've learned. We've learned that they need to focus on a core wide receiver. You, you 
play a lot of these wide receivers, it's tough to build chemistry. I want to see what the first team offense can do for four quarters. I want to see what the first team defense can do for four quarters. Because against Florida and Tennessee and Auburn and Kentucky, you're not going to see as many backups, right? I want to see what this first string offense can do for four quarters, how many points they can put up when they want to, and how good this defense is. Um, they're looking for their shutout. I thought we were going to get in week one. They gave up a touchdown late, gave up a field goal late here. But what we've learned is that the offensive line has to improve. We're not seeing a whole lot of explosiveness out of the run game. The coaching is there. The defense is very good. McCoy Muse is a superstar um, or has played like it so far. Carson Beck is perfectly fine. And uh, Dom Lovett's pretty good. But they need to get some guys back like like Lad McConkey and Dejan Edwards too. We that's what we've learned as well. And they're missing Darnell Washington and, you know, Roger Jones a little bit as well. But that's what I learned. What did you learn the first two weeks? Comment in the section below. Sign up to the newsletter as well. I keep forgetting to plug that early in the video like I'm supposed to. But it's great. It's free to sign up. That link is down below. And I hope to see you on Dog Post.